Welcome everybody to a Cujo Sound and Spacer's Choice presentation of Game Audio Talk. This is where I play through a game and discuss its audio design. This series is about the outer worlds from Obsidian Entertainment. It's a really cool game and a big up goes out to the audio team and audio director Justin E. Bell for making this, as there are several cool things to notice in the sound design of this game. A quick disclaimer here, this is not a review of the game, I'm not gonna bash it or anything like that. Even though we break systems and exploit bugs, it's only to focus on why the game sounds the way it does, how it could be made or solved, etc. Another disclaimer here, this video will contain spoilers, so if you haven't played the game yet, consider doing so before watching this video. And a third and final disclaimer here, I did not work on this game. If you want to know how the sound design of this game is actually made, then there are plenty of videos out there about that. I'll link some of them in the description. Now, let's get to it. In this video, I'll be talking about systemics, and quite specifically about splines. If you do not know what a spline is, then a spline is basically a line that can be assigned to any two points of a level, and then you can have other objects follow this line, spline. This is very useful if we want a sound emitter to follow our player's location. A great example in the outer worlds is how the rivers and watery area works. Let's walk along some of the water here, and you can hear the water fade in and out. Now let's take a step back and see how that works, because potentially to create that soundscape one would have to place thousands of emitters along the waterbed, but there are several reasons to use a spline instead. First of all, let's place a spline along the water here. This means that the emitter of the water is located at the point of the spline that is closest to the player, meaning that when we move along the side of the riverbed it follows us and the river will always sound like it's coming from that direction. Once we get close to it, it still follows us, but this is where the basic attenuation takes over. The Outer Worlds, by the way, is made in Wise, which is excellent for making examples of this later. In order to place such a spline, either the sound designer or the technical sound designer simply opens the level or that area that they are working on and see, oh hey, there's a river here, and with an editor tool they simply draw a line or the spline along the water. Probably in a really easy fashion and it just has one property where you can say which sound to play, either by telling it which event and wise to use, or simply from a drop down menu where you can say small river, and then it automatically knows which event to play. Or, since this is made in Unreal Engine, they could have a specific blueprint simply called BP underscore river spline. I don't know if they're naming convention, but that seems very fair, and that might be all you need, simply because you add this blueprint and it contains everything you need to draw the spline and it already knows, because of the name, which type spline it should be, so therefore it's a river. But it can also be done by sound designers not touching the spline system at all, as the spline system could be attached to the tool that the levels designers have used to paint this river or decide where it should be laid. In that way, level designers can choose where they want the river to go, and the sound of the river will always follow it along its edges, meaning that the sound designer only has to take care of their part of the thing in wise or in the sound design. The cool thing about the last solution is that it becomes systemic, and it just works out of the box. Then of course, polish can be added later by running around the level and listening, just in case a river suddenly sounds all wrong, or there are areas where it needs a bit of a custom setup. The big advantage of a systemic setup is that it works out of the box, like I just said. It automatically figures out what to do within the boundaries that we have decided, or what we as a sound team audio programmer has decided it to do. Like automated recognition of materials for footsteps is another great example of systemic audio features. In that way you don't have to manually pick every area and set the footstep material. It automatically, systemically, finds that out for you. Now one of the more common problems with a spline, and an emitter that follows the closest point on the spline that is closest to the player, is that the emitter might jump from spot to spot too fast. Let's say if we have a spline here, and we are standing here, then moving just one pixel in some direction makes the emitter suddenly appear over here on the spline because this is now the closest point. This requires a bit of smoothing and a system that can sort of figure out how to deal with this. Because if this is a special case, should it then allow for two emitters to spawn? 
or fading between them somehow. But other problems may also occur. And this is where, like I said in the disclaimer of this video, this game is not bad and is not poorly sound designed. I'm simply pointing out that systemics are cool and they also have issues because they only do as they're told. Now check here. As we walk close to the river bed, we can hear the river. If we move very slowly here, notice how the river sound disappears. This could of course be because of some loading and unloading of an area right here, or that the sound simply gets muffled because of virtual voices or anything like that. No, but I actually think that this is because the emitter follows the spline. And when we are here, the spline is actually underground. There's actually a cave here, as you saw previously. But once, as we move over here, the emitter is now free and closest to the player in an area that is not being occluded. And that makes it your choice when designing systems like this, because developing sounds like this in an open world with a systemic system is far more efficient and less time consuming than doing this manually, but it also means that you will bump into several cases like this where game and level design simply clashes with the way your systemic sound design works. All that besides, I believe that systemics is the way forward, just saying. The splines work in exactly the same way when they work on these so-called ether walls on some of the planets that you will visit in the game. Try not to spoil too much here. Systemic splines for water sounds in the outer worlds? There you have it. Thank you for watching this episode of Kujo Sound's Game Audio Talk about the Outer Worlds. I really hope you enjoyed it and perhaps learned something from it. If you are new to Kujo Sound and this channel, why not hit the like and subscribe button to be kept updated about how the sound design in video games are made. I post content for both beginners and experienced veterans. If you really like this channel and want to see more, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this content. I would really appreciate it. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in another video. This is Bjorn Jacobson and Kuto Sound, signing out.